the problem that I'm having is with the HVAC. So how do they determine that? And obviously the old way was done by, like you said, uh, by the square footage of the house. But that so is not effective anymore. And is there a percentage? Yeah, it's actually, it, it, it actually starts boiling down to a cubic footage of the house at that point. So now they're taking the square footage by the, the height of the ceilings and, and working that into their programs. Now on your particular situation, if you have stick built on one level and, and sips on the next, uh, I don't know exactly how that, that would all work out. Maybe Joe can get involved. Otherwise, maybe <clears throat> the thing to do is to have uh, your rep follow up with you and, and talk to your HVAC professional and see what we can work out. To, to get to the, the right place there. Um, we have a pretty good network of, of guys. Um, and I say guys because my HVAC guys are all guys. <laughs> I'm not working with any uh, female HVAC uh, um, professionals right now. But there's one in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There's one in Evansville, Wisconsin. Both of them have a lot of background and, and, and the right software. And they're really helpful to me in helping people get to what you're talking about. Okay, how do we how do we make this work out? Because I'll tell you, in the one of the one of the challenges <laughs> in this area is HVAC pros that want to overbuild the system just out of habit, um, especially in the commercial yeah. world. Um, yeah. And it's it's very common for them to overbuild the system. So we want them to get it right so that their building functions clean and and dry and. It were, it's comfortable. So, um, so Joe, if you don't have anything to add, maybe the thing to do is to follow up with Steve. Uh, where do you live, Steve? I'm in South Dakota now. I was in Colorado, okay. and that's where I started building the set panels, was in Colorado. I mean, we were doing at 11,000 feet. So you talk about wind and yeah. cold. <laughs> we're talking 100, square, you know, 100 pounds per square foot for snow loads. Yeah. But... Um, then I moved out here to South Dakota and I've been doing a lot of remodeling. I'm actually, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm down in Omaha doing a complete house remodel. We complete gut did out. Tell that he was in Omaha? What's that? What do you say? I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I think somebody anyway, else. Anyway, so I, I do travel. I mean, okay. I'm not well, just, I, I think the thing South to Dakota. do, you, you got an email to this, to this seminar and so talk back but roberta's the one probably that sent that out to you uh send right. send a, that note back to roberta and we'll follow up with you and make sure that we can help you through some of those specific challenges um so joe do you have something to add i see your hands up yeah as far as the design of the structure from a mechanical standpoint they'll use what's called um, manual j to actually run through the calculations for heat loads, both for heating and cooling on the building. They'll take into account the climate location, where the building is located, how it's situated, and then um, the R value for the walls and the roof system, as well as the windows. And then once they've used or put all of that data into this manual J program, that it, it's, um, there's a bunch of it's through ACA, the uh, Air Conditioning Association, and it's a standardized way of, of determining loads on the building for both heating and cooling. And they'll use that information then to size what um, the furnace and air conditioning systems that are needed. And then they have another manual that you use to actually size the heating and cooling for each room based on its location in the building. So it can be a, um, a little bit onerous to go through and get the data all pulled together to make that happen. But that's really the only way that you can design um, a given building. And, and this isn't a one size fits all program in the sense that once you've done it for one building um, and you take that same building and put it in a different location, the calculations could all change because of the climate zone and the orientation on the site. So it's important that that information is fed to the person doing 
the design work on that. And as John indicated, we have we collaborate with multiple designers that are available to do that, and they've automated the system. So it's it's relatively cost effective to use them to get the right sizing of the equipment. What's the name of that program again? Well, Emmanuel J is the Emmanuel J. You, John. Yeah, that's that's that what the HVAC pros used to come to that conclusion. And it was interesting. I was talking to one pro. He was he was setting doing uh, a computerized Emmanuel J, and he started out by showing um, two by six walls, R nineteen uh, fiberglass insulation, and his program showed a point five at a, at at resting, you know, not pressurized, just at resting. Um, 0.5 air exchanges per hour. And when he changed the SIPs, the program automatically changed it to 0 0.05 air exchanges per hour <laughs> resting. And he says that in itself, you know, knocked the size of that system down 20%. Um, just that one change in, in, in aerial infiltr in, infiltration, not taking into account our value, not taking into account thermal bridging, just air infiltration. That's a, a pretty, powerful uh, um, testimonial to how well these buildings perform.